Anyway, shall we do um, the AJ Dubois card? Yeah. Hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna lead it in with this. You said, should we do the AJ Dubois card? I did say that. Did anyone hear that? No. You didn't hear it. <laughs> did it not work? <laughs> no. Did it not Just work? for the record, for everyone oh, listening, no. Kai's got all these sound bites now that he wants to play, and that was his moment, and he fucked it. Oh, he fucked it. <laughs> oh, for everyone listening, it was Eddie Hearn going, "Oh, go on then. Hold on. Oh, wait, hold on. Let it me press it. Wait work. there. Wait there. Ready? Go on. What's happening there? <laughs> I'm a, I heard that. Did you not hear that? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was oh, really smooth. Well done. Well done, chaps. It. That was seamless. Great. Right. Um... <laughs> That's what they come here for, mate. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Anyway, right. yes. Yes or no. Did you expect the card to be this good? Or, do, well, do you think the card's this good? <sighs> it's just better than I thought it was going to be. Except for the first fight. The first fight. I don't know. Uh... What? As in Chamberlain? Chamberlain, yeah. So, yes, for yeah, oh, all right, uh, for everyone, go on, John. No, no, because I was just going to say, when I was watching the press conference and it was all like the big neon signs and all that, and then the first name, Josh Pedley. I was like, who? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes walking out. He must have thought, how the fuck am I sitting at this table? Man. Big up Josh Pedley, though, man. Big up yeah, big there. up Josh Pedley. He's got his good opportunity. You were like, good for him. So, yes, um, incredible right, card. Sam, I there, though. Sorry, sorry, Uncle. Go on. No, that's all right. Mark Chamberlain versus Josh Pedley. Joshua Buatzi, Willie Hutchinson. We knew about that one. But Liam Smith against Josh Kelly. Oh, my ass was twitching when I saw that. I love it. Anthony Kakachi and Josh Warrington. Oh, that Didn't well. expect that, but I love it. I absolutely love it. Tyler Denny versus Hamza Shiraz. Yep, sign me up, Tyler Denny. I think you've earned it, bruv. Um, you're up against it. But yeah, you have earned it. Well done. And then, of course, Joshua versus Dubois. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, uh, Predicos, from the bottom to the top, shall we do? Or you got anything to say on the actual card first? Yeah, I think Johnny? we'll just do a brief brief little um, little chit-chat about each fight, I'd say. Yeah, no? far away then. Johnny B, you first, bro. Where the fuck was Danny Dubois cufflinks? <laughs> what was all yeah. that about, man? <laughs> what was all that about? With his big, long sleeves hanging down, man. I thought, uh, well, that was interesting. But um, do you know what? He always wears mad things at press conference, don't he, uh, Daniel Dubois? But, that was straight out of Frank's wardrobe, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, look, stack card. I mean, yeah, it's good, Josh. Do you know what's great about this card, right, is that it's at Wembley. So they're, they're doing uh, good things there. A bit too stacked, though, isn't it, John? Um, bit, a little bit too stacked. And um, as you say, Tyler Denny, he's obviously landing. I was listening to Ben Shalom saying this is like life-changing money. So... You know, he's what he's getting. What do you reckon he's getting? 200? 250s? Um, maybe not that much. No, nah, maybe a bit more. I mean... Yeah, no, I reckon at least that myself. Be nice to know, but whatever he's getting, he's earned it. You're right. He's yeah, he's, just, so he's, he's, had, he's, he's had some big fights or whatever, you know, and um, yeah, it's just whatever. So, like, all of a sudden, this guy from Birmingham is probably European level, like, let's be real. So, he's got an either European belt, and then he's had a couple of sort of tough 50-50 fights. He comes through them, then all of a sudden, boom, you're on this you know, Riyadh card, Wembley, you're fighting Hamza Shiraz. So... It's not just for the big boys, ultimately, is what I'm trying to get at. Do you know what I mean? With the big pre- profiles, you can sort of work your way up and then luckily land on there, like Mark Chamberlain and uh, Josh Pedley as well. So uh, that's interesting about it. I thought the whole Joshua and Dubois sitting there having the face off. You see, what did you think of that? When they yeah. did, let's, let's, do, let's go reverse order and end up on Joshua and yeah, Dubois. Yeah, so go on then, start. rather than jump around. Well, I'll, um, I'll just say, first of all, I want to eat humble pie because I didn't think I'd see boxer a part of these Saudi cards so soon. But yep, happy to eat humble pie. And Good what was I think it's brilliant. I think it's brilliant. And I, do you know what? It was just the one thing for me was why isn't it Sam Noakes? I know Mark Chamberlain's a Queensbury fighter, but that, you know, I don't think Eddie would have given a shit. I know it's a lot of Queensbury versus Matrim, Matrim versus Boxer, blah blah blah, whatever Queensbury versus Boxer. I don't think Eddie, for the sake of the card, that should have been Mark Noakes. I can only assume that the only reason Sam Mark Mark Noakes, Noakes, Sam <laughs> Noakes, yeah, I can only assume that the only reason he ain't there is because Mark Chamberlain ate him. <laughs> oh, I know, how fat is he? <laughs> Mate, he's been an Mark... all-inclusive to Turkey, he has. Yeah, that, that wasn't a good look. He was standing there. I thought, fuck, you know, you look like cruiserweight. cruiserweight. Mate, his face had doubled. Yeah, yeah. he looks He's massive, got a lot of work to do. I didn't even recognise him. 
As I was, it was an interview he was in after. I was thinking, is this really him? I'm sure, it's ain't the same. Mate, Tur- guy. Turkey's been paying him well, man. He's been shopping at Waitrose lately. Yeah, man. Yeah. Good stuff. And yeah, on, for with him. Ben Shalom as well. I was, what, I was. It does make me laugh. Let's say this is just my silly little sense of humour. But the fact that the whole thing with Eddie Hearn and Ben Shalom, and then ultimately, let's be real, Ben Shalom took. Bawatsi from Eddie Hearn. So all of the work that Eddie Hearn had done with Bawatsi, building his profile, which is a fucking hard task, let's be real about it. Then and then uh, and then Ben Shalom goes and gets Bawatsi. So that's that was a little part of the angst between the promotional companies. That was one of the starts of it. So there's that. So all of a sudden, Bawatsi is fighting Willie Hutchinson, right? So that's Ben Shalom maybe one up on Eddie Hearn for this card. Then you look at the whole Tyler Denny. That should have been Felix Cash. But obviously, you got your trousers yeah. pulled down, Eddie Earn, by old Ben Shalom. And now Tyler Denny's taken that little spot. So Ben Shalom has just slipped in there, boy, and got those two <laughs> little slots. <laughs> yeah, it is so true. It? It, just it, should have been, it should have been Felix. That's what, probably what it was. Yeah, of course. It to be Felix Cash. But in, when, I was, when I was looking at that whole scenario, I was thinking, what the fuck is Chris Eubank Jr. doing? Weren't he supposed to be on this fighting Hamza Shiraz? They offered him the deal, apparently. They apparently offered him the deal and he just didn't take it. Like, what are you doing with your career, mate? Like, I know. Well, he could have fought Liam Smith again on there, couldn't he? Fucking hell. Like, don't you want... Like, is he earning enough money now? He don't care. Or are they not paying him two million because, you know, maybe that's what he thinks he's worth? Just uh, ridiculous. I can only assume doing? that he's trying to hold out for some sort of easy world title opportunity that gives him an, an avenue to get one because he knows he can't beat the elites to get one. That's all I can assume. Madness. Yeah. It's, it's, maybe they didn't put Clark and Wardley on here, did they? Because they're saying it's more a standalone pay per view. And obviously, Sky Sports Boxer, they've got a schedule. They maybe want to put a, another pay per view on Sky Sports. So, that, so this is what I, part Fair of enough. what I'm saying about stat cards and stuff. I, I was quite happy to see that. So to me, it mm. just gives me another weekend where I'm going to have like a, a top fight to look forward to. <laughs> Um, I'm just have to get it in. I, but I, I thought that made sense to, to see that not go on there. And maybe that's what Eubank's looking to do as well. So I could help it. All right. Um, so parliamentary yeah. procedures, starting from the bottom, as we said. So, yeah, um, Josh Padley, 14-0, uh, only four knockouts. His last three fights, he's had a TKO retirement and another TKO. So he's on a bit of form, clearly. I don't know many of these names, I've got to be honest. But, um, yeah, I suppose he's come a little bit out of nowhere. But uh, I ain't got a lot to say on him, to be honest, because I, I just ain't yeah. seen him fight. But, um, obviously, Mark Chamberlain has been pretty good so far. And um, it's a hard one to call because we don't know what Josh is like. But, I yeah, saw a little bit I think he'll be, coming in, he'll, be, he'll be coming in to... Uh, oh, yeah, have you? He'll be coming yeah, in to... Um, make a name for himself, which is good. So, uh, go on in, Kyle. What do you reckon when you see him? There was only a couple of fights on there. Not many views. Again, I don't know where they found him or that maybe, you know, speak to him more. I mean, we're hardcore fans, but there's, there are people that do this, you know, YouTube and podcasts that probably know a little bit more than us. But, um, yeah, I, I've never heard of him. Everyone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never heard of him. So, I mean, from what I've seen, though, Mark Chamberlain's pretty heavy-handed. Five stoppages in a row now for Mark Chamberlain. Yeah. Um, so I, could, I fully expect him to stop him in this fight. But again, just going by the eye test, mm. that's all it is. Anything to say on Padley, John? Yeah, not sure what this is all about, really. Like that uh, Padley, I was just looking at his records, a lot of like six rounders and stuff like that. So, and yeah. he's a lot of, he's fought in gyms and hotels and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, good luck to him. Yeah. Starts good luck off the night and um, he's got, he's safe. Another whatever Brit, he's got a chance. He, you know, he's getting some decent money for it, and who knows? He could change his life, innit? it? If he, uh, oh, knocks mate, out if he knocks out, if he oh, knocks out it. Turkey's favourite fighter, yeah. guess who becomes Turkey's new favourite fighter? Exactly. Yeah, the castle, mate. Yeah. All right, let's get on to the juicy stuff. So, um, Joshua Buatzi and Willie Hutchinson. Now, it Is that takes next? a Hold lot. On, son. Yeah, yeah. Kakache no, Warren. Kakache Warren. So what? No, no, no. Well, no, I'm reading it on Queensbury. In this order. So ah. whether this is the order of the night, I don't know. Josh Kelly, but... Le- go on. Who, who do you think's chief support? I think Kelly's. T- thing, it's isn't it? saying to me Tyler Denny and Amza Shiraz. Nah. No, no, no. It can't be. It's not. It's Liam Smith, oh, well, Kelly. I fucking read it and wait. Yeah, who's bruv. that from? <laughs> who's that Queensbury. From? Queensbury, Queensbury I promotions. Trust that outfit, mate. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, anyway. <laughs> well, you work for the zone, didn't you, bruv? What are you looking at the Queensbury app for? Fucking <laughs> okay, no, It's yeah, not on the zone. I can't find it on the zone app. Oh, I can't yeah, find right. it on you the zone. You deleted that app the other day, mate. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on them fuckers at the zone. All right, what, which Fucking which hell. one? All right, good question. Which one would you have as chief support? I know mine, Liam Smith. Hundred percent. It's got a hundred percent. Hundred percent. Josh Kelly. Okay. Or, or Boatsy Hutchinson. Either of those. Nah, I want Liam Smith because yeah. they, them like Liam Smith's been in the game a lot lot longer than Josh Boatsy. Hundred percent. Got a lot more. Anyway, fans. we'll go with what you think. What's next? Right, well, I'm going to go on by the Queensbury mm. list, all right? So um, they put Hamza Shiraz and Tyler Denny directly. And remember, Hamza Shiraz is an ambassador for Riyadh season. So don't be surprised to see him chief support. And look, I'm True. just saying if he comes the, poster, out, the poster here has got Hamza Shiraz and Tyler Denny at bigger than everyone else. So can't be. That, that if anyhow, be. they have... Tamza Shiraz and Denny as chief support at Wembley just before Josh and Dubois I'll do an emergency pod because that's bullshit it shouldn't oh, be yeah. well, of course it is it should be title. Kelly Smith or like former world champion against or Josh Kelly as you say two bigger profiles or Joshua Boatsy Willie, Willie Hutchinson 100% should be either one of those that's, that's anyway bullshit. so I'm going to go by this list uh Right, so yes, Joshua Boatsy versus Willie Hutchinson. Now, what I was going to say was it takes a lot to get Joshua Boatsy angry. And Willie Hutchinson managed to do it within five minutes of meeting him. That man is fucking infuriating, <laughs> but I'm here for it. So, uh, yes, as as always, bit gutted it weren't Anthony Yard, but it is what it is. Willie Hutchinson has already made it quite intriguing because he's, he's stirred up a little bit of beef there. Your thoughts on it, Kaya? Um, do you know what? Go, John. My doorbell's just gone. <laughs> oh, what a shot. Um, do you know what? I thought when they was head-to-head, I thought you could see the size difference. I thought Bawatsi looked, obviously he's taller, but he just, he looked bigger. He looked thicker set. Um, and you're right. It takes a lot to get him going, but it takes a lot for him to fucking answer a question straight and all, doesn't it? <laughs> Without going around his circles or fucking throwing out cliches. But, um... Yeah, mate, I say Willie Hutchinson is a welcome addition there. And I'm so glad that he's got his mental health intact and uh, he's a player now. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be a good fight. I say they've both got good amateur background. So they've got, you know, the amateur pedigree. uh, So you're going to both know their way around the ring. Um, And yeah, I I mean, I've got to say, I favour Buatsi. I just feel like from what I've seen of Buatsi, and like he's come under a bit of flack sometimes and sometimes you think to yourself he's hardly really he ain't really lost loads of rounds and you know he had he sort of had a good fight with Craig Richards right but he won the fight he had you know Dan Aziz he won the fight I didn't feel like he was ever in any danger against Craig Richards or Dan Aziz then all the other fights he had leading up to that you know he got a bit of a shiner once off of um I think that Croatian boxer Kalic Kalic yeah but Apart from that, and then you start looking at that and go, oh, he got hit. But on the whole, when you actually look at him, he is my kind of fighter. I like the way he fights, comes forward, stalks his prey. Um, yeah, he's got that sort of high high guard, slip left, right, chopping hooks, and he's got bad intentions. And um, he, he say he could be that guy. He really could, you say, because he has got the background as well. He has got the amateur background. But with Willie Hutchinson little bit more slick, a little bit more variation in his punches, a little bit more unpredictable. So it'll be interesting to see how we'll deal with that. Um, and, but, you know, we've seen Willie Hutchinson basically get floored, right? We've seen that. We've seen him take a heavy punch and get floored. And you're going to get that, I think, from Bawatsi. Interesting <clears> fight, <throat> though, man. Very interesting fight. My early prediction is <laughs> Bawatsi on points, I think. It's an early prediction. Okay, Ooh. Kai. Ooh. Um, oh, it's a fascinating fight. Just just because, of, you know, I'm not going to regurgitate everything there because of the punch variation of Willie, Willie Hutchinson. With Willie Hutchinson, it's like you've got 28 shots because you just don't know where they're coming from. He shoots them from the hip. They come from all weird, strange angles. And I think that's going to be a problem for Joshua Bawatsi in this fight. I really do. He's, he, he won't have fought anyone like Willie Hutchinson to this point of his career, but the fights that he has had, right, he's dealt with them, but not massively convincingly. Right, Even the Dan Aziz fight, and Dan Aziz is not really the Dan Aziz of two years ago. 
didn't think he was like sensational in that fight either. I mean, it's quick predictions. <laughs> I'm, I'm going. I'm going to. I reckon this is this is the time for Willie Hutchinson. You know? Oh, yeah. I knew you was going to do that, bro. I, 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 I think he's going to edge it. I think he's going to edge it just because I don't think Joshua Boatsy is going to be able to deal with that slickness, and I think he's going to nick a lot of rounds in there. And don't get me wrong, Boatsy himself is not. You know, just straight punches down the line and body shots, you know where they're coming from and hooks you. He's a little bit, you know, unorthodox as well, but not to the level of Willie Hutchinson. And he doesn't switch hit like Willie Hutchinson does. He switch, switches quite a lot. And he knows when to switch as well, Willie. You know, someone like Kid Galahad just switches too much for the sake of it. Willie Hutchinson's a, a very good fighter. Very, very good fighter. And, and you know, he got knocked out. You say he got knocked out, but knocked out by Lennox Class. That was a long time ago. And that was at 168. But clearly drained at that weight. I think he's brilliant outside the ring, causes a lot of shit. He's the type of mate you don't want with you when you're going out for 10 beers. <laughs> You'll end up in a big fucking bar brawl with him about, with you? 100%. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to edge towards Willie Hutchinson. I really am. Yeah, <sighs> I'm going to take a gamble. Joshua Boatz is going to be a big favourite, but... I'm going to take a gamble on Willie Hutchison on this one. My oh! only reservation, my only reservation, is that it's twelve rounds, and I know Buatzi's better at going twelve rounds, and he was knackered in the um, Richards fight, um, Willie Hutchinson. But yeah, I just think the outside shenanigan, outside the ring shenanigans, are going to play a part in this. I think he's going to frustrate Buatzi hmm. outside the ring, and then I think he's going to frustrate him inside the ring. And I'm looking at Boatsy's record. He ain't fought no one like Willie Hutchinson. You just said it there, Kaya. He ain't fought no one like that. And um, yeah, Dan Aziz compared to Willie Hutchinson is just a massive difference. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So he really impressed me, Willie Hutchinson. I had Craig Richards to win, to, to win, but I didn't know he was that good. I just didn't. And um, I'm going to go on a gamble for Willie Hutchinson. I think I'm saying it's a gamble because, as I say, Boatsy's going to be a heavy favourite here, I predict. I don't know about heavy. But I just think not heavy. Mm. No, no, I think he'll be a slight favourite. Willie Hutchinson dealt with Craig Richards a lot him. easier than I think he did, didn't he? I just think he's going to outbox him, and I think he's going to be all over the fucking ring, off the ropes, bouncing off the ropes, and everything. Just and like you say, throwing them shots that you don't see coming, and uh, I just think he'll just accumulate a few more rounds, and uh, ultimately, I think he'll, he'll frustrate Buatsi. I do. I think with Hutchinson, one thing he does is that he gets off the line really well. So when Craig Richards was throwing those predictable jabs, he sort of slips the jabs, gets off the line, and he just, he's off. He's, he's, he's off in a different sort of direction. Then he resets. And by the time your opponent is like turning, then they've got a reset to get their feet planted to throw something. But I felt like Craig Richards was in that fight, predictable jab, throwing the jab, not following it up and got moving, stepping into range. And I feel like it, part of that was to do with Willie Hutchinson because if you find a jab and you're stepping into range, then Hutchinson was sort of um, coming off the line. Now you're you've fallen in a little bit, and now he's coming at a different angle, and that's what he was doing so well. But I think with Buatsi, I think he's got a sharper, straighter, quicker jab than Richards, and I don't. And I think when he does come off the line, Hutchinson, he comes up with something else, some other variation. I think Buatsi's speed of punch and speed of foot to be able to turn. And the venom and the ferociousness of Boatsy is much more than Craig Richards. And he's just, and he's going to be ready to stand there, that mid-range or up close in the clinch and throw his fucking hands with bad intentions. Because he can put his shots together well as well. I think Craig, I think Craig Richards made Hutchinson look as good as he was. And there was, there was an element that Hutchinson made Richards look as bad as he was. But it's, it's a little bit of the two. I don't think that was the best Richards in. I think Boatsy is going to be a lot better in the ring, then Richards. I Richards totally agree. Up. I've got. I do agree. I do agree. And as I say, I do think it's a bit of gamble. This one, I just think it's a different. It's a big difference for Buatzi in the sense that he hasn't had this antics outside the ring. He hasn't yeah. come up against someone who's a slick boxer mover. Let me ask so, you this yeah, though. So that, from, that's what I'm going to. Let me ask with. you this though, Uncle. Right? From what you know of Buatzi, from all the stuff, all of you, do you think that he's going to let Willie Hutchinson bother him? He's going to rattle him. Do you well, think he already, already has? Rattled. You think he already he's has? Already what when he what when he st- when he stood up went forward? But what's he expected to do? He he's his nut on him. He couldn't be any more rattled than that. Nah, but do you, what do you think he's going to make him fight in a different way? Oh, in the ring. I'm saying oh, he the, can oh, make. I see what you mean. Uh, well, 
I'm so I'm, I'm trying to um, clarify what I'm saying, basically. So I'm expecting Willie Hutchinson to be very slick on the night. And if Buatzi has problems with that, then yes, he might be a bit wayward and he, he might be throwing sort of wayward shots and whatnot. That's what I'm going off of. That's how I potentially see it going. Potentially. A bit of frustration. So do you, do you think this then? Do you think, you know what? When us when that left my lip share, I fucking forgot that he went there to end with him. So let me rephrase that, right? So do you think then those antics from uh, Hutchinson, he wants Bawatsi a yeah, bit rattled. He, he wants does. you coming on to me. Mate, it worked a treat with Craig Richards. Worked an absolute treat. Craig didn't I know have Craig a, Richards just... done nothing for the first six rounds. Didn't even throw a fucking punch. I know what you mean, though. Towards the back end of the fight, it was just chasing them around, getting frustrated. One thing you can't do is let Willie Hutchinson take the first two or three rounds and you just, now you're chasing the fight. You'll be running around after him the whole fucking night, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Big gamble for me on Willie Hutchinson. Uh, Kai's convinced as well. So uh, It's a close one, though. Your, I, don't it's a close it one. Any, I don't say it of any authority or, you know, you know there's you no know asterisks. Yeah. I'm still going with Hutchinson, but... Yeah. Do you know what as well is like with um, Hutchinson, we need more receipts, don't we? Like we say, we're talking about Tiafimo Lopez the other day, it's the, earlier, you know, one minute is fucking brilliant. Next minute is a, a, he labours to a victory. So I need to see a few more receipts on the table. I think with Willie Hutchinson, that's for sure. Fair right. Enough. Let's move on to the third fight on the card. According to my Fuck poster, you, what you're making up as you're going along. According to my poster, Riyadh season poster on Queensbury Promotions. It is Liam Smith versus Josh Kelly. I love it. I'm so pumped. I'm Go on, buzzing empty, to see Liam empty Smith. Empty your nutsack, Unc. Empty your nutsack. Oh. Nut Don't mean literally, mate. Fucking hell. Do you want us to leave? Give you five <laughs> you know, minutes. Man. I'm doing this off the cuff because I haven't really. I just got off excited the about the fight and then it, and then it was. Uh... <laughs> There's a cuff thing to this uh, show. Fucking Dubois forgot his cuffs. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, do you, to, do you want us to give you five minutes? I'm doing, oh, I'm doing this off the cuff. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely ain't given much thought about this fight. I was just so excited about it. But anyway, no, I'm doing it now. So my thoughts are, I do I, I, I do think Liam Smith wins. I do think Liam Smith wins. I think it's just, just purely by experience, um, opponents he's fought before. I'm pretty sure he was a little bit injured in the uh, in the Eubank fight, the second one. Judging by his, you know, I mean, the way he performed, and uh, yeah, he just looked a little bit shaky on his left left leg. I think it was. So I don't think that's a great fight to go off of. But previous to that, Liam Smith has always been tough as hell, just a warrior. I think he's going to get to Josh Kelly the way that Avanesian got to Josh Kelly, and yeah. I think in the late rounds it could be just a little bit too heavy for old Kelly. And um, so and on top of that, Adam Booth is uh, Adam Booth's not one to let his fighters take a lot of damage. So potentially Liam Smith could do a bit of damage there and make Adam Smith Adam <laughs> Adam Booth go. <laughs> That's enough for me. So I'm going to go Liam Smith. Yeah, do you know what? So do you know what? Let quite because I know quite loves a bit of Josh Kelly. So I want to hear him uh, make a case All for right. Josh Kelly. All right. So Josh Kelly, I think. He's been poorly managed, poorly promoted since the uh, Troy Williamson victory. I think he was a bit of a crest of a wave, you know what I mean? Because everyone picked Troy to win that fight. Not, not many people picked Josh Kelly. No, they get I remember Lewis, talking Lewis, Hart, Lewis Hart picked Josh Kelly. So big up Lewis Hart Boxing Social. But you picked Troy. I'm pretty sure nah, you didn't pick Josh Kelly. I didn't. Pretty I sure you we, picked Troy. Any of us fucking picked Troy. Williamson. I picked Troy. Did you? I did. Because you saw what Avanesian well. did with, to Josh Kelly. And Josh Kelly had been, after the Avanesian yep. loss... It, it, you know, Josh, Troy Williamson seemed on paper all wrong for him, especially up at New Weight, 154. But yeah, he made he made Troy look stupid there. But in hindsight, you look at Troy's recent performances, maybe it weren't as good a victory as it looked at the time because he's been been beaten a couple of times since then. Ishmael, El, is it Ishmael Davis Ellis, sorry, I forgot Ellis, isn't it? Sonny Edwards is, uh, yeah, 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 mate. 
He's lost to him. He's lost to um, who else did he lose to? Troy. Fucking everyone hell. was sorry. I just quickly add to this is every that Troy Williams. So I just remember everyone was dining off of the um, who did he knock Cheeseman out? Cheeseman Agiarco. That's it. Sorry, Agiarco. That Cheeseman was, win. The Cheeseman knockout, wasn't it? That's what everyone was dining. So out he, he looked like on paper a terrible matchup for for Josh Kelly, but he, he navigated through that, schooled him, won the fight, and then for a year, Callis Allen's done fuck all with him. Really, he's fought. Um, he's fought twice 20, in 2023 he fought fight twice Gabriel Corzo and Placido Ramirez everyone's like ooh do you know what I mean like who are they you're supposed to be one you know one of our one of our best fighters in that in that weight yeah. class 154 weight class so going up to 160 to fight Liam Smith and just coming back to your earlier comment about Liam Smith in the Chris Eubank fight he had to take that fight contractually the rematch was running out so he just went in there fucking half cooked and got battered as a result of it. But he needed, obviously, it's a big payday. You ain't going to leave that on the table. So I think that was the reason you saw the Liam Smith you saw against Chris Eubank, even though I thought Chris Eubank was excellent that night. But this, for me, is reeks David Avenesian all over again. He hit the nail on the head there, Unc. If you're going to get um, a better, someone find me a better educated pressure fighter than Liam Smith in this country, yeah. especially at 35 years of age, with all the experience he's got, you know, being able to close the ring off and land his shots head and body when he's at mid range. There ain't Taking a better one. Gear all the way. Smith. Yeah, there ain't a better one. And I think he's got 15 weeks to get in tip top 15 weeks. So as long as he's injury free, I think this is, this could be a one-sided beat down. I think by Liam Smith on Josh Kelly. I really do. And it's a bit of a free hit because he can just go, all right, I went up to 160. Chance my arm, give me my dough. Thank you very much. You know, I, I packed out the arena with my with my mate, my fans up, up from Sunderland, and I'll go back to one fifty four and handle my business down there. But this is how, that's how fitness plays out. Liam Smith by stoppage. Yeah, do you know what? That was one of the main things I was going to say, and you just said it. I was going to say sometimes you got to look for the little asterisks, and I thought the fact that they've gone up to one sixty, that's the get out. Like if they Obviously. lose to Liam Smith, they've they've got the, they've got the perfect excuse. I went up to one sixty. You know, he fought Avenition at one four seven, wasn't it? That was at one four seven. Then he's gone up to one five four. Had the fights that you mentioned, the Troy Williamson fight, and then uh, and now all of a sudden he's, he's jumping up to one sixty to fight Liam Smith. And then you're looking at if if Avenition could do that to you, and now you're looking at Liam Smith, former world champion. You know, I said his resume is pucker. The fighters he's been in with, he, you know, even some of the fights that he's lost, like the performances. That he's put yeah. put in absolute warrior, educated pressure fighter, and um, yeah, just brilliant shot picker as well. And he'll just make you work every single second of every round. And you know what? I did. I actually watched the full Avenician fight last night with Josh Kelly. It's a full. Let me go because I, I had a funny feeling that you might pick Josh Kelly, Kyle. Right? I wasn't sure you mm. was going to pick Ink, but uh, Unk, but I'm not Ink, Unk, but I, I remember um, Kaya was higher on Josh Kelly back in the day. And um, I watched the fight again last night. And you know what was mad, right? Avenition didn't even really have to try to do that. I watched it and it was like, Josh Kelly, he moves left, he moves right. He throws his hands, pot shot in. And all of a sudden, he'll throw like a really nice eye-catching left hook. But do you know what it looked like to me? All of the shots that he's throwing, it's like, have you just done too many pads, like too much pad work? where you're just throwing them really nice eye-catching technical punches and it's like that pop, you hit the pad, then you pull out and you move. It's like no, nothing's with bad intentions. You're not sitting down in your punches, following through, throwing nah. something and then stepping into it. It's like everything's off the back foot. It did not, none of it had any pop behind it. And by, I think, the fourth round, it was blowing out of his ass. And then Avenition was, was, like, was just walking him down, walking him down throwing his hands and then eventually just caught him with a couple of tricky little shots, little left hook ran, ran through the guard. Then before you know it, he was out of there. And then as you say, Alan Booth threw in the towel. But I'm just looking at Liam Smith. His hands are not as quick as Avanish. And that's one thing I've noticed. With Avanish, he's got quite quick hands. When he was stepping into range and he was taking one, when he was finding a little gap, his hands were really quick. So Liam Smith needs to get you pinned into that corner to put his shots together. And when he does, they're going to be a lot harder, but I don't feel like they're quicker hands than Avenition. So that's one thing they might have seen to take this fight. But I'm telling you now, just quickly, Adam Booth, if if Josh Kelly gets destroyed in there, and I, you know, I was thinking about it, I said it the other pod, didn't I? The other yeah, geezer I couldn't think of was Liam Williams. He was training Liam Williams, wasn't he, for the Eubank fight. That didn't end well. 
Then obviously Conlon, fucking uh, uh, Josh Kelly. Because some of the fighters he's had down there lately, I'm thinking, fucking hell, I thought you were a Hall of Fame trainer, man. He obviously sees enough in Josh Kelly, though, to win this fight. But, yeah, I'm right just going time. off of that. I, I I don't think Josh Kelly hits hard at all. He ain't... I don't think he's been... I love Josh Kelly, don't get me wrong. I just don't think he hits hard, and I don't think he's been um, fighting the right people to take him up to this level all, all of a sudden. And uh, Liam Smith, as you say, he's just fought at a really high level his whole career. They're like the Kerbinov fight and the Munguia fight, I know he lost them, but they don't really do it justice. Al, on paper, it just says loss, but... The great fights and he, he performed really well and one like one of the other could have gone one of the other way. So yeah, I don't think ultimately Kelly's got enough power to make a dent in Liam Smith. Just hopefully that injury from the Eubank fight is not ongoing. If that, and, if that uh, Liam we Smith, see we see a full a full whack Liam Smith. If that Liam Smith turns up, Josh Kelly plays with him and yeah. it's a masterclass and he beats him on points. If that But we're assuming it don't. Yeah, I agree. Assuming it don't, and we we're assuming the first Eubank fight, Liam Smith comes up. Yeah, I think Josh so, Kelly could take the first two or three rounds. By the way, when he's all fresh, hundred percent. Well, he, he did against Avanesian, to be fair. He, he did. Yeah, he did. He did pick up the like probably three or four rounds, and then but yeah, it just unravelled. Okay, shall we move on? So we're uh, Liam Smith across the board there. Oh God! So we're moving just, on just quickly to saying because let me just quickly add to that. So uh, Liam Smith, oh, fucking hell, hurry up! God, sorry. <laughs> so Liam, um, so Liam Smith, they're saying it was their talk about you fighting Hamza Shiraz, and he goes, "I don't want to say too much." He goes, "But let's let's see what happens with Kelly, and then I could be back." So basically, I think that's oh, what really? they're. Yeah, well, look at the card. There's two middleweights on there, so I think that's what they're trying to put together there. Liam Smith v Hamza Shiraz, if they both come. Oh, through I fights. love it! I tell you what, do you hear what he said about Ben Shalom? He loves Ben Shalom, oh, by the way, Liam fun. Smith. He can stay over there. <laughs> he goes, I'll leave him right there. Because <laughs> he, he has called class. him a piece of shit, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Shit house. Also. He loves that word, doesn't he? Shit house. Oh, well, because he didn't. Man. He said when he beat Eubank, he brought him out for a meal or something. And when he lost yeah. to Eubank, he didn't bring him out for a <laughs> meal. Hear from him. Didn't yeah. hear from him. He did take me to the same restaurant. But yeah, no, he's obviously had a bad relationship with Ben. Um, and feels like he's left him out in the cold after the Eubank fight, which. I don't know. Maybe you did. I don't know. Anyway. Do you know um, what? Just right. before we move, you're going to move on to the main event, isn't it? Now you're going to move on to Warrington Kakacha. No, just quickly, I just want to get... Left. Just, I just want to get your thoughts on what does Anthony Yard do? I know we've touched on this quickly, but how does Anthony Yard get back in this mix? Now that everyone's all mates, no one's going to sign him because they don't want to piss each other off. Where does he go? Does he have to go fucking Golden Boy or something? Or I'll top tell mate? you how he gets back in the mix. He goes... How? crawling on his hands and his knees back to Frank and goes, Frank, I am so sorry, bruv. I and totally misjudged that, though, it. I was listening to Tunday and I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> no offence, <laughs> Tunday. <laughs> By the way, if you're listening, bruv. <laughs> we like you. It just looks like you may have made a little cock up there. It's such a shame because you want him in there. He's such an exciting fighter. But how the fuck does he get... Because before all this Saudi stuff was happening, you'd just go side with a rival promoter and they'd be happy to take you just to stick their fing- finger up at their fucking rival. But now they're all mates. They're, you know, Eddie ain't signing him. Eddie don't want to rock the boat. Ben's now got to get in his... Uh, little, ben would uh, take him. Ben yeah, Ben's yeah. took fucking a Coley. Oh, well, yeah, Ratsy. Ben will take it. Fra- Frank, Frank runs the show out there. Frank's the main man, isn't he? Let's be honest. You think if, if Ben took Frank, that Ben would be on any of these cards moving Mate, forward? No chance. We, we thought Ben that, took no chance. Yard, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Ben took Frank, we'd be on any of these cards, you said. Anyway. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. Did I say? Who said what? <laughs> <Can't remember. laughs> um, Mate, I don't know. Mate, listen, you're uh, entangled in some court dispute you can't fight so yeah. he, ain't, he ain't gonna be able to fight is he because there'd be ramifications if he fights it might there might be more uh i don't know yeah, but akoli was in a court dispute with matrim probably still is he's fucking fighting no yeah well, matrim uh, dropped that now true i don't know no but this is a different situation because akoli went to another promoter and then started fighting under that promoter. Anthony Yard's gone away from a promoter and he hasn't got any other promoters to go to because everyone's a little bit like, oh, should we sign him? Because, you know what I mean? I, we're assuming they're like that because Saudi uh, Frank's running the Saudi show. But, you know what I mean? Will, will Calais take him? Would um, 
No, top can't. rank, isn't it? Bob Arum. They've got Zergo, haven't they? Top rank. It's going to have to be America. Gonna They're going to have to pack up Zergo. and leave their bags. But you're right. If, if this goes, if we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but if this goes to court, that is a long process ongoing. And he in that time, chicken. you're right, John, he can't fight. There's no spring chicken. He's in his early 30s now. Is he 32, 33? I think he just wants to... Ma- this this, this fight talent. is the fight where he's going to make the most money. Because as you say, he can't afford another loss. So it's like it's all pending on this fight. This is where he's going to make as much money as he can. Because if he loses it, that's the gamble. You're in the Who Needs Him club. You ain't getting a big payday until you maybe have two, three fights and get back into the mix. But, yeah. Fucking hell, poor Anthony. Yeah, it looks a bit... Bleak. Sad, the situation, bleak, yeah. All right, Anthony Kakachi versus Josh Warrington. Didn't see that coming at all. No. Don't know what's happening with Lee Wood, but yeah, there we are. Anyway, I'm, I'm bang up for it. I like Josh Warrington. Thoughts on it, Kaya? Stylistically, this is, my fight. this is the fight I'm looking forward to the most. This is a war, absolute war, because they're both not really big punches. Forget about what happened against Cordina. That's the first stoppage. Anthony Kakachi's had in, in the last eight years. So that was all down to Cordina weight draining himself and God knows what else he did, going out running on the day of the fight just to try and make weight. So um, this is a war. It's a firefight. It's the only thing it can be. Warrington, that's Warrington's fighting style, has shown us that over the years. He's not, how many boring fight, Warrington fights have you seen? Not many, right? It, it's Honestly, this is, this is the makings of fighting the night for me. So... Uh, telephone box, stick them both <clears> in the phone box, I think. One of those type of fights, who am I edging towards? I don't want to be disrespectful to Kakachi, but I think that victory is a bit of a false narrative there Ooh. because of how bad Cord- Cordina was and how weight-drained he was. And he couldn't take, a, <laughs> couldn't take a single shot in there without fucking falling over. Warrington ain't going to do that. Warrington was beating Lee Wood before he got chinned. I don't think Kakachi has got the one-punch knockout power to beat to chin Warrington and knock him out. It'd have to be accumulative punches over a course of time, uh, over the course of the fight. And I think Warrington's probably this, I going to say he's the better fighter. I don't know. Kakachi's brilliant as well. <clears throat> so <clears throat> close. I'm going to edge with Warrington. I'm going to edge with Warrington in a very close points victory in this one. Ooh. But only just, and I could be wrong, but only just. Warrington's only had one win in his last five. Mm. Yeah, but look at the level of opponent. John? Yeah, as you say, he lost to uh, Lara, then it was a, a draw. He beat Martinez. That was a good victory, wasn't it? Um, and then, yeah, lost to Alberto Lopez, lost to Lee Wood. Regardless of the performances, he still lost convincing. Well, he didn't lose convincingly against uh, Luis Alberto Lopez, but the Lee Wood, he got stopped. Um, I know what you mean. He's 40, like, of late, he's been his be- better opposition. And that Kakache, yeah, I know what you mean. He's a slick fighter, though, Kakache. He throws his shots well. He can fight off the back foot. He seemed to have... Um, I, I, Cordina is definitely... Um, it looks better on paper, maybe, than what we mm. see. As you say, we all thought that going into the ring. He just looked... He just didn't look the same for some reason. I don't know why. But he just, no, he just didn't <laughs> seem the same fighter in there, Cordina. Tell us on Saturday with no cameras on. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I actually like Joe, uh, Josh Warrington. I always have done. I've always come under some stick, man. When we used to do uh, the other show, um, I always like him for some reason. He gets a lot of stick because he's... Uh, Fucking want to marry him the way Because well, he's the Leeds. Him. Everyone hates the Leeds fans, isn't it? But, um, oh, mate, I think he's been a... Look at the, some, of the, some of the fights he's had. You, you, Carl Frampton, Giselle B. Dirty fighter, though, isn't he? Not Loves really. You go in like yeah, that and throw, throw your shots. It's what happens. I'll leave off. He's all head and no gloves. Yeah, heads and shoulders, knees and toes, mate. <laughs> it's great big space raider head coming at you all night. <laughs> like that. Bosh, bosh. Oh, fucking leave it out, ref. Yeah. Uh, One thing is, though, he is definitely a warrior. The Leeds warrior, I think the name suits him. And, um, mate, yeah, he's, he's a good fighter. He's, he's better fighter, mate, than what people think, Warrington. He really is. The only problem is, he's been stopped a few times. He's lost, say, he's, what is it, three out of the last five fights? He's coming to the end of his career. He's been in a lot of wars. Is that wear and tear? Is that going to add up? Like, his whole game is a volume puncher, isn't he? So, 
What's he going to be able to catch his 35 and all, though? I think yeah, he just ain't had the wars, though. Sometimes you can be an old 35 and you can be a young 35, but he, I looks, know what you mean. he looks fresh, mate. Kakache to me, plus also Warrington's going up to 130 pounds for the first time. Oh, that's so right, yeah, what, that's right, yeah. yeah. I don't know what relevance that's going to have. Maybe that will help him, hinder him, who knows. But it's definitely gonna it's gonna matter. Isn't who, it? who are you going for, John? I'm gonna go for Warrington on points. Oh, yeah, I totally disagree with both of you. Oh! I think this is bad, bad news for Warrington. I really do. I, I, you say what you want about Cordina. I thought they were heavy, fudding shots all night from Kakachi. And I don't think Josh Warrington now has got the punch resistance to handle it. Yeah. I don't. It's possible. He might have a little bit of a, <clears throat> you know, I mean, a, a moment, not a moment, but it was a prolonged moment with in the Lee Wood fight where he was, he was outboxing him and uh, he was having more of the success. But eventually... Lee Wood got to him. I think Kakachi's just gonna not yeah, one punch knockout power, I don't know, but I think he's gonna break him down and I think he's gonna hurt him. And I think he's gonna you know, I mean that sort of seven, eight onwards, I think that's gonna be bad news for Warrington. I think Fucking he's gonna get hell. beaten up and stopped. I do. Fucking hell, Unc. Been out of the ring for and a also, year. And also Warrington. like like you say, going up to one thirty five. One thirty. I'm not convinced one thirty rather. I'm not convinced that's gonna benefit Warrington. I'm not. Mm. I, like, I like this Kakachi man I like, I like what I see he's a warrior there's no way in a million years that Warrington's knocking out Kakachi nah, I'll put my hat nah. I'm putting my money on that now that's not happening because Kakachi's a tough as nails and yeah. Warrington ain't got the punch power and yeah I think it's fight of the night though. and I can't I boys. can't go off as well I can't let slide the fact that Kakachi's on a massive high night right now mm. and Warrington has got a long way back mm. and he needs to win this fight and uh, yeah. Also, Kakachi hasn't made the day. dough yet. He hasn't made his dough yet. Warrington has. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. You know, when, when you're trying to when you're trying to support your family and give him a bit of generational wealth, your kids, their kids. Kikachi and who was it? Warrington. That Warrington has, isn't he? I think. Um, who was it? Um, Frampton said, "Nah, mate, this Kakachi is a lot better than what he reads on paper." But you, oh, and I might he flip that. flop. Hold on, I might hold flip on. Flop. You lot all might said as well. Right, flip let's flop. before you flip flop. <laughs> You lot all said as well against Martinez. Everyone was picking Martinez to beat um, Josh Warrington. He ain't the same fighter after the Lara. Howard Foster let it go on too long. Yada, yada, yada. I won't say fight. He went in and destroyed Martinez. Oh, actually, I'm not oh. flip-flopping. <laughs> no, watch, watch that fight See, a again, bit of perspective John. by Johnny B there. John, bit watch that fight. I, I, I can't. He won the fight, okay, but... The head. Mate, there's so many headbutts in there. You see that that is I've never seen a boxer's face as bad as Martinez's fight um, face after that fight. That is that was awful what he did that night. Yeah, and it was he's, dirty, uh, he's and like if if hell. there's a if the referee on the night against Kakachi stops him from doing that, I tell you, he, that's he, <laughs> it's, oh, not, it's, not it's not legal. It's not legal, but it's one of his biggest weapons because you got his head coming at you all night. And you just start, you, yeah. you don't know, you change the way you fight yeah. because you can't exactly. Deal with this and great then what will happen was Kakachi will get on the back foot, try his little pot shots, and then when he owns that space, Josh Warrington, he'll step in mid range, up close, up close, and he'll just volume punch out, he'll throw his shots, scoring punches. Nah, I think the referee's going to be on it. Go on, oh, Kai, you you're fucking with my brain right now. I am on the edge of a flip flop. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know what to do. I got Kakachi knockout. Stick it in. Get stick, a toy. Stick a get a toy. In that it's, 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 it's a clip of a foin. It really is. Okay, let's move on to chief support. Tyler Denny versus Hamza Shiraz. Oh, we've already done it, haven't we? This ain't chief support. <laughs> <laughs> How have we done it? Oh, did you? T- I didn't say fuck on it. We didn't. Oh, go on. You talking on, about? It. You did it. We didn't do didn't it. We do this already. Nah. No, we haven't done it. Fucking Tyler Of course we haven't done it. Kai, it's chief support, mate. We haven't got this far yet. Uncle's making it out of the Chris Eubank, Felix Cash. Did it all. No, we mentioned his name. Go on. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, no, I've got Hamza Shiraz all the way. Oh, man, the man's just been brilliant of late. And uh, yeah, I think Tyler Denny, good fighter. But again, hasn't got the power. He's certainly not going to make any sort of a dent in Hamza Shiraz. Yeah, that long jab of Hamza Shiraz, man. Yeah, he's, I think he's just going to beat him up and I think he's going to stop him mid to late rounds. It's the end of it. One thing I will say is if Tyler Denny can go the distance, 
that's as it's a silly thing to say, but it's as good as a victory in terms of getting the callback. If he gets obliterated in four or five rounds, and that probably, he's probably not going to feature on one of these cards again. But if he can take Hams at a distance, it's not many people have recently, then he can come out of it if he's stock relatively yeah. high. But I don't think he will last a distance. I said in the Hamza Shiraz um, Ammo Williams fight that I was worried about his boxing ability. In fact, I packed, I picked Ammo Williams, but Hamza Shiraz has got great boxing ability. I ju- he must have had an off night against Bradley Skeet, or maybe he was a bit young and a bit inexperienced. But um, from what different I saw at the class. Ammo Williams fight, yeah. different weight class as well. Yeah, mm. from what I saw of, in the Ammo Williams fight, he had it all. He just has everything in his arsenal. And uh, yeah, I think Tyler Denny's bitten off more he can chew there. But good on him. I'm glad he's got the payday, and uh, yeah, Johnny B. I think the same. I think uh, I think he stops him. I think, as you say, Ammo Williams, Liam Williams, um, yeah, and his last four or five fights, I think he's just knocked everyone out or stopped them. So, yeah, I mean, it's Tyler Denny. You want to sort of get behind him, and you want like I don't know, he's a good fighter. Like he's definitely I just the way he's beat Felix Cash. There, I feel sorry for him. Even like when we done the pod, we ended up speaking more about Felix Cash than we did about Tyler Denny. Which is a liberty, mm. as you say. He's, um, but he just, I don't know. I'm not. I feel like he does everything good. He's a nice, tidy fighter. Um, he's southpaw, and he's a southpaw fighter. Yeah, he's quite a slick fighter. But there's nothing I'm seeing that's going to get you to be like a world champion. Do you know what I mean? I think you're beatable when I when I when I see him fight. Um, but yeah, I think Hamza Shiraz stops him and moves on to a fight with either Josh Kelly or um, Liam Smith. I think that's what it is. That's Big height difference as well. And how do you get through Hamza's defence, man? He's solid, isn't it? And he can take a shot and all, Hamza, is what we yeah. see. Kaya? Yeah, pretty much everything I just said. Um, I think Tyler Denny, if he does put up a good performance and, uh, you know, do himself proud in there and don't just get blitzed out of there, then, um, yeah, you'll see him again. It all depends on how he loses. I believe he loses the fight. I don't think he can beat Hamza Shiraz. I think Hamza will get to him in the middle rounds. But um, for Tyler Denny's benefit, I hope he can just hang on in there and uh, give a good account for himself. But yeah, Hamza moves on. 